This conference will now be recorded. Okay, now we will continue our uh, session. In the last class we have discussed that what are the different services provided by the operating system. So there one is your user interface services, where we are having the graphical user interface, the batch interpreter or interface or command line interfaces. And then there are some system calls are there that you know we have seen that what are other services means one is program execution input output operations for the uh, input output devices then the file system here we discussed about how to create a file giving the name to the file then the giving certain permissions to the file like read the write and renaming and then the other operations like delete the file and so on. So, so then we talked about the communication as there are processes, more than one processes, process is executing certain tasks on operating system. Then they must communicate to each other. So how the message is passed from one process to another process that we observed in the previous class and the error detection. So today we are going to discuss about the another set of operating system functions that exist not for helping the users, but rather for ensuring the efficient operations of the system itself. So systems with multiple users can gain efficiency by sharing the computer resources among the users. So in that this particular group is treated as another set of operating system functions. So first one is the resource allocation. The resource allocation. When there are multiple users or multiple jobs running at the same time, resources must be allocated to each of them. The operating system manages many different types of resources. Right, so some such as CPU cycles or main memory and the file storage. Right, so these some may have the special allocation code, whereas other such as the input output devices may have much more general requests and release the codes. In determining how best to use the CPU, the operating system to have CPU scheduling routing that take into the consideration part, right? So there may be also the routines to allocate the printers, USB storage drivers, and other peripheral devices. So I think it is clear for you what are the resource allocation. Resource allocation is nothing but assigning the CPU timing to various jobs or uh, you know, assigning certain memory for execution of the programs or assigning some functions for input output devices. For operating systems, so they may have the CPU scheduling routine algorithms to execute the job function. Okay, we used to call jobs in operating system, right? The next one is the another service which is provided by the operating system is accounting. So we want to keep track of which users use how much and what kind of computer resources. So this record keeping may be used for accounting. That means the users can be billed or 
simply for accumulating usage statistics so usage statistics may be a valuable tool for researchers who wish to reconfigure the system to improve computing services means it keep track of how many users are working on the operating system so nowadays we all knows that any operating system it may be windows or it may be uh, the linux or unix or it may be uh, the os uh, like uh, uh, mac os operating systems on a single machine on a single operating system there may be the multiple users like user one is admin suppose another user is suppose guest another user is suppose faculty another user is suppose a student so multiple users are there on the same machine sometimes when admin entering into the operating system he may use different kind of services sometimes when students enter into the uh, operating system they may use some different services so for every account different services are given and different privileges are provided for those accounts okay and the next one is and the, this is the most important one that protection and security services provided by the operating system so what it is the owners of information stored in a multi user or the networked computer system may want to control use of that information as i told now when admin entering he may have complete rights to access everybody's information but when the student entered into the operating system on the same machine they may not you know they don't have permission to access the files which are belongs to the admin or faculty that means whatever the information of admin and faculty is there that should be protected and some security must be given to them so when several separate processes execute concurrently it should not be possible for one process to interfere with the other or with the operating system itself so protection involves ensuring that all access to the system resources is controlled security of the system from outsiders is also important right so such security starts with requiring each user to authenticate so how they can be authenticated how the users can be authenticated usually by means of providing user id and a password to gain access to the system resources so it extends to defending the external input output devices including network adapters from invalid access attempts and to record all such connections for detection of break ins okay so these are the various kind of services which are provided by your operating system okay what are those means one is the user interfaces that is graphical user interfaces batch interface command line interface and other services are program execution input output operations file systems communication error detection and the third set of resources are the services are resource allocation accounting protection and security right so these are the various types of services okay so now we will check it out one by one in detail the first one is the user operating system interfaces user and operating system interfaces so we mentioned earlier that there are several ways for users to interface with the operating system so here we discuss two fundamental approaches right one provides a command line interface or command interpreter command line interface or command interpreter so what it do that allows users to directly 
enter commands to be performed by the operating system. So these commands are in terms of text. So these texts are taken from the keyboard, right? So the other interfaces that allows users to interface with the operating system via graphical user interface. That means there you can find the icons or we used to call sometimes items and those items are uh, the menus will be selected by your mouse pointer or sometimes from your keyboard pointer and once you select the item or the icon automatically the operation will be invoked right so the first we think about the the command interpreters or command line interpreters some operating systems including the command interpreter in the kernel right so the others such as the windows and unix treat the command interpreter as a special program that is running when a job is initiated or when a user first logs on right so on systems with the multiple command interpreter to choose from the interpreters are known as cells remember i repeat on systems with multiple commands not single command there are multiple commands are there with multiple commands or multiple command interpreters to choose from the interpreters are known as your cells okay for example on unix or linux systems a user may choose several different cells including suppose the, the bond cell is there c cell is there bond again cell is there and con cell is there different cells are available what are those one is bond cells or c cell or bond again cell or con cell these are you know the various cells available in the unix and linux operating systems and sometimes the third party cells which are freely uh, you know user written cells are also available in so most cells provide the similar functionality only a user choice of which cell to use is generally based on personal preferences only right the main function of the command interpreter is to generate Okay. the main function of the command interpreter is to get and execute the next user specified command next user specified command right so many of the commands given at this level that manipulate files means what they can create the file they can delete the file or list the file or print that file or copy that file or execute that file and so on so the ms dos and unix cell operate in this way only so these commands can be implemented in two general ways so in one approach the command interpreter itself contains the code to execute the command for example a command to delete a file may cause the command interpreter to jump to a section of its code that sets up the parameters and make the appropriate system calls in this case suppose the number of commands that can be given to determine the size of the command interpreter since each command requires its own implemented code right its own implementing code so an alternative approach is used by the unix that is among other operating system that implements most commands through system programs in this case the command interpreter does not understand the command in any way it merely uses the command to define and identify a file to be loaded into memory and execute that so this is another kind of approach so here on the screen you can see 
as i told in the previous uh, you know discussion there are many different cells are there right for example for unix and linux systems users are having different kind of cell options what are those cells means one is bone cell command another one is bone again cell or c cell or con cell different different cells are available right so let us just observe here this is a bone cell command in the command line you can see here everything is taken in the form of text only so here it is written as w in the command prompt or you can see the terminals in the terminal if you enter w so this is the user mode is this one if you enter w means it shows the what is the working environment now so here you can observe what is the time on the system the time which is showing on the system how many users are there on that particular system and how the load average is there that means how the resources are utilized by these two users and whether the, any user is using any virtual terminal this tty means tele typewriter that means it is a virtual terminal we used to say virtual terminals and what kind of consoles that they are using console means for internet connection purpose which console port that they are using and what are their serial numbers the port serial number is mentioned this is one way and another one is the iostat space is another command so here you can observe when iostat space or space 5 is typed given as an uh, you know command prompt uh, uh, inputs then here you can check it out what is the speed of the disks disk zero speed in terms of kilobytes and in terms of megabytes disk one speed in terms of kilobytes and the megabytes so for every devices which are attached to your machine that is going to be displayed here if you type ls suppose so it can list all the applications and the you know directories and icons which are available on your machine everything will be displayed here including what kind of you know the data is stored on your machine if you type the if you give the command line prompt input as a pwd means present working directory in this present working directory what do you find who is working on this machine now what is the ip configuration what is the speed of your internet what is the upload speed what is the download speed so everything will be displayed on your terminal screen so this is uh, you know about a machine uh, of which is using the the bone cell command interpreter in solar system systems okay so now come to the graphical user interface okay the graphical user interface so the second strategy for interfacing with the operating system is through a user friendly graphical user interface or sometimes we used to call it as your gui okay so rather than entering the commands directly via the command line interface the users employ a mouse based window and the mouse sorry the menu system which is characterized by the menu system which is characterized by a desktop metaphor desktop metaphor right that means what this graphical user interfaces are what i am saying the users employ a mouse based or keyboard or monitor based desktop metaphors so the users move the mouse to position its pointer on a images like this if i want to do if, if these are treated as images as they are moving on these images or icons on the screen okay that represents the programs files directories and system functions so depending on the mouse pointer's location clicking a button on the mouse can invoke a program and select a file or directory see if i click here it is selecting one file 
it is expanding so what is the program which is written here is you can see the collapse okay if i click on that what is happening it is minimizing if you see here if you are uh, you know moving your pointer on this particular icon right term it is showing the expand so expand program is going to be invoked so whenever you are clicking on that the expand program is invoked and the mag the complete screen will be maximized right so this is uh, something about your moist pointer okay and the graphical user interfaces you know if you go through the history of that one the graphical user interfaces the first appeared due in part to research taking place in the year sometimes i think uh, in the year 1970s or 19 yeah in between 1970s it's xerox park research facility where it is it is invented at Xerox Park. So, however, the graphical user interface has become more widespread with the advent of Apple Macintosh computers in 1980s, basically. So, the user interface for Macintosh operating system are simply we used to call as Mac OS. Okay. So, many systems now include both the uh, command line interface as well as your graphical user interfaces so microsoft windows is graphical user interface with command line interface cells are available for apple mac os or macintosh operating system x is aqua that is also having the graphical user interface with the unix kernels that are underneath and cell available unix kernels means terminals will be available over there Unix and Linux have the command line interface with the optional graphical user interfaces. So here there are you know different uh, uh, kernels are used uh, by Unix and Linux operating system. What are those? CDE means CDE means CDE, KDE, and your genome. CDE nothing but what the common desktop environment. CD means common desktop environment command line interfaces are used and another one is K desktop environment or genome these are different terminals which are used in the you know as a interface between user and the operating system in Unix and the Linux operating systems okay but now nowadays you are finding the smartphones right nowadays we are having smartphones for smartphones you don't have mouse option you don't have keyboard option also everything depends upon the touch screen only right so whenever you are designing an operating system for smartphones so during the design part only you have to be very clear about the goals of that particular operating system which is going to be executed on your smartphones so what are the goals here as operating systems executed on desktops and laptops the same kind of operating system is going to be designed and executed on smartphones also but thing is there is no input output physical devices associated with the smartphone operating system so in that case what you have to do you have to create virtual keyboards and virtual mouse pointers so you need to write a separate routine for that to execute the programs on the smartphones so how it is possible then so on the screen you can check it out the touch screen devices requires new interfaces what are those most not possible or not desired so actions and selections based on the gestures and the virtual keyboard for the next entry but nowadays for every smartphone you may having the the voice commands all right suppose if you are having apple code you are having siri over there you can directly speak to siri you can say that find the direction from uh, one place to another place so automatically it can open the you know google maps and find the direction from one place to another place so there you are not having keyboard you are not typing anything 
and you are not even having your mouse pointer over there simply taking the voice commands as an input uh, by this operating system which is executed on your smartphones and it gives the output in terms of the map okay the next one is the choice of interfaces the choice of uh, you know whether to use a command line or the graphical user interface is mostly one of the personal preferences that means what system administrators who manage computers and the power users who have deep knowledge of a system frequently use the command line interfaces who system administrators and the power users who have the complete or deep knowledge of the system they frequently use the command lines because they know everything about their system so instead of going on your graphical user interface they use only command line interfaces why because many of the programs won't executed many of the programs cannot be executed with the help of graphical user interfaces so most of the almost all the programs can be executed by the command line interface but uh, all the programs cannot be executed by your graphical user interface in in such cases the users who are familiar with graphical user interfaces they must go on having some sort of knowledge about the command line interface then only some programs will be executed or else it is difficult for the operating system users right so here indeed on some systems only subset of system functions is available via the graphical user interface as i am saying and leaving the less common task to those who are command line knowledgeable so the command line interfaces usually make repetitive task easier in part because they have their own programmability for example if a frequent task requires a set of uh, uh, command line steps suppose so those steps can be recorded into a file in a sequence manner and that file can be run just like a program so the program is not compiled into executable code but rather is interpreted as a or interpreted by the command line interface so these cell scripts are very common on systems that are command line oriented such as the unix and the linux one okay so i can show you one of the uh, you know on the screen you can check it out the mac os graphical user interfaces so i think most of you are familiar with the mac os uh, uh, mac operating system right so most windows users are happy to use the windows graphical user interface environment and almost never use the the ms dos cell interface but what is the difference between windows graphical user interface and the mac uh, os graphical user interface the first and foremost and the basic difference is if you want to minimize any window if you want to minimize any window or maximize any window or you want to close any window you can see that these buttons are these buttons are available on which side here you can see the differences okay these buttons are the minimizing one or maximizing one or the closing one available on right side whereas in the you know the uh, mac os this minimize maximize buttons are on left side on top corner of window right left to top corner of the window side so that is the basic difference in in, in graphical user interfaces and uh, in the uh, windows operating system in windows operating system very rarely you may use the command line prompt so here you can see if you want to see the command line prompt simply go through the search button type the cmd you can find the command line prompt over here right so in command line prompt very rarely very few applications if you wants to install that is the application software if you wants to install on the operating system then only 
you use sometimes this command line prompt but whereas in mac operating system if you need to apply any permissions uh, or you provide any permissions to any folder any file or any directories you have to have the terminal that must be open on the screen uh, on the operating system uh, cell and then you need to give certain commands to execute that one so that is the difference between the mac os and the graphical user uh, sorry mac os graphical user interface and your windows graphical user interface so here historically the mac os yes you can see okay yeah so here you can find minimize maximize and closing buttons here whereas in windows you can find this side okay and see historically the mac os has not provided a command line interface but always requiring its users to interface with the operating system using its graphical user interfaces so with the release of mac os x means in the earlier days which is in part implementing using a unix kernels right the operating system now provides both the aqua interface as well as the command line interfaces so this is something about the uh, uh, the mac os right so now let us go with the other topic called system calls okay so to design any operating system there are majorly three points which we uh, you know which i informed you right first one is what kind of services provided by the operating system for the users and the programmers second one is what are the different types of interfaces interfaces provided by the operating system for users or programmers and the third one is what are the different components and how those components are interconnected to each other so these are three different components while designing the operating system you need to keep in mind right right so if you go through the the system point of view here you can see the the viewpoint of your operating system what is there here in this the viewpoint of operating system the first one is the user interfaces that we discussed the graphical user interface batch and command line and then we have discussed the other services also then we go into the user interfaces uh, what kind of interfaces are there with the unix what kind of interfaces are there with windows and the macintosh os okay so now let us go and discuss with the system calls right so let us see what are the different system calls and when they are going to be executed okay we can see one by one this system calls provide an interface to the service made available by an operating system so these calls are generally available as routines written in high level language typically these interfaces are typically written in high level language like c and c++ although certain low level tasks for example the task where the hardware must be accessed directly the hardware must be accessed directly such kind of task the low level task may have to be written using the assembly language or instruction so as you are ec students you are aware of the assembly languages you may write the micro programs right the embedded programs on your machines so while writing or developing a assembly language like macros and micros we use so in assembly language what is there only the instructions and the memories are involved as you might have the idea about suppose addition of two numbers what do you use the micro uh, the macro used as add capital add and then the whatever the values are available stored in certain memories like add r not comma r1 capital r not comma capital r1 means what the content of r1 and content of r2 are added together and store that result in the r1 register correct so such kind of uh, you know if you want to 
R1, R0, R0 and R1 are access behavior means what? R0 is a register that is the hardware part that is accessed by a program. That program written in a low level language means you are assembly language, right? Okay. So, the operating system makes Hello, who is that? Who is that? Hello. Number is taking. Try to try to mute yourself. Hello, Pawan. Who is Pawan? Who is Pawan? Hello, who is Pawan? Pawan is disturbing. Who is Pawan? Power is there, who is power? I said then I He is disturbing the entire class. Yeah. yeah, so now we discuss the system calls. So here, one approach is for the program to ask the user for the names. So for what is this? So <clears throat> Let us, you know, before discuss how an operating system makes system calls available. So let's first use an example to illustrate how the system calls are used and writing simple program to read data from one file and copy them to another file. Write from one file and copy them to another file. So the first input that the program will need is the name of two files. The name of two files. 
right you can see here one is source file another one is the destination file from source file the content will be read and that will be copied into the destination file right so what we are saying the first input that the program will need is the name of the two files the input file and the output file are we used to call as source file and then the destination file so these names can be specified in many ways which one the input and output file names can be specified in many ways depending on the operating system design so one approach is for the program to ask the user for the names one approach is for the program to ask the users for the names in an interactive systems this approach will requires a sequence of system calls here you can see the sequence of system calls how they are going to be happen first the example system call sequence is as acquire the input file name right from to the screen right so here what happens first to write a prompting message on the screen and then the you know then to read from the keyboard the characters that define the two files so on mouse based and the icon based the systems mouse based that the icon based systems what happens a menu of file names is usually displayed in a window so the user can then use the mouse to select the source name and a window can be opened for the destination name to be specified so this sequence requires many input output system calls so once the two file names have been obtained here accepting the input right the acquiring the output file name also so once these two file names are accepted sorry acquired I suppose the program must open the input file and create the output file so each of these operations requires here you can see create the open the input file if file does not exist it aborts or else file will be open then create the output file if file exists means same file is there means it will abort if it is a new file that file will be open then it comes into the loop form in the loop what it do it reads from the input file and write to the output file until read fails okay that means until it goes to the end of the file it can read the character by character or whatever content is there in the file that will be read when it reached to the end of the file automatically it will abort then it close the output file also and write the complete message to the screen or the terminate the particular program execution in normally so the program execution can be terminated in two different ways either in a normal way means program is successfully executed abnormal way means program is having certain errors okay so this is uh, you know uh, the example of the file systems so how the system calls are used for that okay so now let us check one more example of the standard api in the standard api what happens generally even some simple programs may make a heavy use of the operating system right the systems execute thousands of system calls per second so most programmers never see this level of details so however the application developed or the application developers the design programs according to an application program interface you might have heard about this one right apis application program interface so whatever applications that you are using the developers always develop the application program interface like we, now we are using go to meeting for online classes right for go to meeting also the application program interface is developed so that it can interact with the operating system and it's a hardware part also right the api specifies a set of functions that are available to an application program 
certain functions here you can see in this example okay in uh, in my you know and a uh, unix operating system if you want to read certain content from the file so you have to have the read function so that is available in unix and linux systems so the uh, uh, the the application program interface the api for this one is uh, for this uh, function is obtained from the man page so there is one directory is there in the uh, you know command line um, uh, of your linux or unix operating system that is man page by invoking the command man read man read so on the command line if you enter this one the description of this api appears like this hash includes an istd.h the header file so s s s or s size terminal then read function will be there then certain parameters are given to it so what are those parameters so if you go and checking this you know the parameters one by one you can see the program that reads function must include the an istd that header file as the file defines the s size terminal and s size terminal data type among other things so the parameters passed to read up are as follows like so in the parameters what is the first one the integer right so integer means what integer fd so it, it, it defines that the file descriptor to be read and the second parameter is void star buffering it means the buffer where the data will be read into then size t count size t count means the maximum number of bytes to be read into the buffer so on successful read the number of bytes read is returned and the return value of zero indicates end of the file if an error occurs the read returns the value one right so here the design uh, means the designing a program using an api can expect the program to compile and run on any systems that supports the api so in reality the architectural differences often make this more difficult than it may appear so furthermore the actual system calls can often be more detailed and difficult to work with than the api available to an application program so there often exist a strong correlation between a function in the application program interface and its associated system calls within the kernel so in fact here you can see there is a typical and a number of associated with each system calls the system call interfaces that maintains a table index according to the system numbers the system calls interfaces invokes the intended system calls in operating system kernel and returns the status of the system call and any return value it may be zero or it may be one so the caller need to know nothing about how the system call is implemented just need to obey what is the application program interfaces and understand what kind of operating system will do as a result of call so most details of the operating system interfaces hidden from the programmer by the application program interfaces that means simply managed by the runtime support libraries only some set of functions built into libraries including the compilers itself right so uh, in the next class we just discuss about the the api system calls and the operating system relationships in the next uh, lecture notes let me just take the attendance mm -hmm.